generally when we talk about problems in a vegetable garden, we're talking about pests and diseases and weeds, of course. For the most part, we have weeding under control in most of the growing spaces that we manage as part of this Red Gardens project. Or at least the weeds never get to the point where they start to impact the yield or health of the vegetable plants. But that hasn't always been the case, and I still fail occasionally with some of the explorations that we do. We have a range of different pests that can cause problems, but we're gradually getting better at finding ways to eliminate them or to reduce the damage that they do, or at least keep them away from the crops. Some pests we've had better success than others. But diseases are still an issue for me, especially the fungal diseases, and I haven't been great at paying enough attention and giving consistent focus in managing them. And often I just end up letting the diseases run their course. This year I decided to make more consistent efforts to use a milk spray to reduce the impact of powdery mildew on the leaves of courgette or zucchini plants, especially later in the season. This spray seemed to be more effective than I expected, but I'm still not sure if this is something that I will consistently use as the main way for dealing with this common plant disease. Courgette or zucchini plants can produce a lot, sometimes too much, and we're often quite glad when the harvests start to slow down towards the end of the season. I do put in the effort to look after these plants, especially earlier in the season, to protect them from frost and the cold winds, and I really look forward to the first few harvests. But the amount of attention that I give these plants tends to reduce as the season progresses. And because I grow quite a few plants, there tends to always be enough, even if I don't put in the effort. I have been doing more to care for these plants in recent years, especially trying to provide enough water and fertility for continual growth. But apparently I haven't been so successful with that in some cases. I occasionally do some hand pollination, especially when I don't think there's enough bees around to do the job earlier in the spring. I remove some of the side shoots and prune out a lot of the older leaves to reduce overcrowding in the beds and to prune out some of the leaves that are worst affected by powdery mildew. I have tried using a milk spray a few times in the past few years to deal with powdery mildew infections, which is a method that I've seen recommended a few times, but I haven't used it consistently enough to be able to determine if it's really effective. Powdery mildew is a fungal disease that is spread through spores and can apparently affect quite a few food crops and other plants, but I've mainly seen it on squash, courgettes, and cucumbers, which are all closely related plants. This disease has also infected some pea plants, including a really bad infection with one batch of peas this season. The spores develop into fungal growths or colonies on the surface of the leaves and other parts of the plants, which looks like a white powder or dusting, hence the name. And this has the result of blocking photosynthesis as well as extracting nutrients from the leaves themselves. The more of the plant that is infected, the greater the disruption or restriction in growth of the plant there will be, which of course leads to reduction in the yield or productivity. As with many fungal diseases in plants, there is a lot that can be done, including growing healthier plants and reducing overcrowding and pruning to remove any affected leaves and cleaning up any plant debris, as well as general garden hygiene in order to reduce the chance of spread or reinfection. There are some fungicides that I could buy in to use as a control, but generally I try to stay away from those types of solutions. Over the past couple of years, I've seen a number of recommendations to spray the leaves of infected plants with dilute milk as an alternative form of controlling powdery mildew. Apparently, sunlight reacts with the proteins in the milk to create antiseptic compounds, which last long enough to damage the fungal infection on the leaves. But then these compounds degrade into something more benign, so the leaves need to be sprayed on a regular basis to restrict reinfection, and apparently it's better to use it as a preventative spray. This year, the plants in the outside gardens were infected with powdery mildew by mid-August, or the infection started earlier, but mid-August was when I noticed and started to do something about it. I started by pruning out the older leaves of the plants, removing a lot of the leaves that are worst affected by powdery mildew, and giving more space for the remaining leaves. I then mixed some milk with about twice as much water and used this to spray the leaves, concentrating mostly on the parts of the plant that still had signs of fungal infection. 
I use skim milk, which still has the proteins, which are apparently the essential element, but doesn't have any of the cream, as I wasn't sure if I wanted to cover the leaves with butter fats if it wasn't useful. I tried to spray on a sunny day, as that is what is generally advised, and when the forecast indicated that there wouldn't be any rain for a day or two. But that can be tough here in Ireland, especially with the overcast and rainy summer that we just had. But I ended up being able to spray these plants four times, approximately 10 days apart. We were also growing courgettes in one of the polytunnels as part of an experiment in relay cropping, where these plants would produce courgettes later in the season. And they started to get infected with powdery mildew at about the same time in mid-August. But they were younger plants, so they were infected before they needed the first pruning. Rainfall was not an issue in the polytunnel, of course, uh, so I had a little bit more flexibility as to when I could spray. But I wasn't sure how much sunlight was needed, and if direct sunlight was essential. These courgette plants are partially shaded by taller plants, and I'm not sure if the plastic would affect the nature of the sunlight, and if the spray would be effective at all. I ended up spraying these plants with the dilute milk every six or seven days, concentrating most of the spray on the leaves that were obviously affected, but also spraying the overall plants, including the leaves that showed no signs of powdery mildew. I was thinking that this could be a preventative spray, damaging the initial growth of the fungal colonies before they were even visible. There were definite improvements to the plants in the polytunnels, as the leaves that had been affected were now dull, not powdery as before, and I assume that this is the remains of the fungal colonies that had died off. And the infection didn't seem to spread as much, but it's hard to tell as I didn't leave any plants unsprayed as a control, but at least a lot of the younger leaves seemed to remain unaffected for longer. There were still some leaves with powdery mildew, especially the older leaves lower in the plant, where there would have been more time for the fungal colonies to develop. But they're also more likely to be shaded, and it's possible that not enough sunlight was able to hit the leaves in order to change the proteins in the milk into the antiseptic compounds. I cut off and removed most of these leaves as part of the regular pruning that I was doing in order to keep these plants more under control to prevent overcrowding in this polytunnel. At this moment, late in the season, there are very few leaves on these plants with any sign of powdery mildew. It could be that the conditions are not good for the spread of this fungal disease, but it seems that the milk spray worked. The courgette plants in the outside gardens also seem to be doing better because of the milk spray, but again, I don't really know because I didn't leave a few unsprayed as a control. It probably would have been better to start spraying these plants earlier before the infection really took hold, as I had done in the polytunnel, not only to reduce the drain on the plants, but to prevent the production of more spores to spread the infection. As it was later in the season with the weather cooling down and these plants getting older and there being additional issues, including some nutrient deficiencies in some of the plants, it's hard to say how much of an impact this to spraying with the loot milk would have had on these plants. But this spray does seem to work well enough, both outside and in the polytunnel, to use as a method for controlling powdery mildew infections in the future. But I don't think it's necessarily the only method, or perhaps even the main method, to reduce the impact of this fungal disease. It is interesting that not all of the courgette plants in the outside gardens were affected by powdery mildew, even though it was the same batch of plants from the same variety and the same set of seeds, all transplanted at the same time into four different gardens. The plants in three of the gardens were affected by powdery mildew, but one plant at the end of the row in two of the gardens didn't seem to be affected at all. I'm not sure why this had happened, but it might be because some of the roots of the courgette plants had grown in amongst the potato plants in the adjacent bed. And as we harvested the potato plants, digging out the potatoes, this would have damaged some of these roots, perhaps making the courgette plants more susceptible to powdery mildew. And the courgette plants at the end of the row would have been affected later on in the season, perhaps allowing them to be more resistant to the first round of powdery mildew infection. Also, the four courgette plants that were spread out in the polyculture garden were completely unaffected by powdery mildew right up to the end of the season. These were big strong plants that were growing really well with lots of space because I hadn't got around to planting the succession crops that would have filled in the other parts of this bed. 
it could be this extra space and lack of competition or that the soil around these plants wasn't dug so there wouldn't have been any root damage or it could have been better fertility or some other factor that protected these plants. It could be that the plants were bigger and stronger because they didn't have to suffer through the powdery mildew infection. But I think that the fact that they were strong and healthy was part of the reason that they didn't get infected in the first place. I'm not sure, but it shows that infection by downy mildew is not inevitable for courgette plants. I was wondering if the wind direction could be a factor, that the spores being blown by the wind could miss some of the plants. And this could make sense because the courgette plants in the polyculture garden were generally upwind from the other infected plants. But with two batches of late season peas that we grew this year, the opposite was true. With the batch of peas in the intensive garden being badly affected and the batch in the no-dig garden, which was downwind, were not affected by powdery mildew at all. Given that these two batches of plants were only 10 meters away and sown from the same variety and the same seeds at the same time, I suspect that it is some difference in soil condition or fertility availability that has led to this difference in susceptibility to powdery mildew. But there is not necessarily anything inherently better in this particular management method, as a few years ago the peas in the no-dig garden were much worse affected by powdery mildew than any of the other peas in any of the other gardens that year. There are other factors, of course, including that different varieties of the same vegetable can be more or less susceptible to powdery mildew. I have seen this with different varieties of squash and pumpkins that we grew this year, with some varieties being really hit back by powdery mildew, but the leaves of other varieties right beside them were not affected at all. So a spray of dilute milk definitely seems to be an option for reducing the impact of an infection of powdery mildew, at least on courgette plants. But I think I'd rather figure out how to grow them so that they are naturally resistant to this type of fungal disease. Part of this could be selecting a different variety, giving the plants more space, and making sure that there is adequate fertility and water, and not damaging the roots. But this is not necessarily possible, especially if I want to grow a lot of vegetables in a relatively small space. So it's really nice to know that I can use a milk spray to knock back any infection that does occur. There is a cost in using milk spray like this, both in the cost of the milk itself and the time that it takes to spray the plants and clean the sprayer afterwards. And this cost and effort increases if I'm going to be more proactive with spraying as a preventative measure, especially if I'm spraying a wider diversity of crops in all of the different gardens. But I think there could be a real benefit in spraying earlier, as this would reduce the amount of spores that are created and spread across other parts of the gardens, and reduce the amount of spraying that is needed later in the season. And it will be really interesting to see what difference it'll make to the yield of the courgette, peas, and squash plants if I'm successful at using this spray to prevent the spread of this fungal disease. But this preventative spraying is another thing to remember to do, rather than simply respond or react whenever I see an infection of powdery mildew. And it's another task to add to a long list at a busy time of the year, and a fair amount of milk to buy. Perhaps there is a balance in all of this, to accept a certain amount of powdery mildew infection in the gardens, especially when it can serve as a useful indication of when conditions might not be optimal for the different plants to indicate when things might be able to be improved. Having the capacity to do those important things at an appropriate time is a big part of how you can be successful with a vegetable garden. And it's also a big part of how you can be successful with a YouTube channel. People who have been watching this channel for a long time will have noticed that I haven't been uploading videos as often as I used to, but this is something that I'm definitely going to change as we head into the winter where I plan to upload much more frequently as we have more time away from the gardens. I also haven't been doing many of these little things at the end of the videos where I talk about the channel and ask for subscribers and supporters on Patreon, but those are also important things to do on a regular basis. All of the work and explorations that we do in the Red Gardens project and all of these videos that I make are funded almost entirely by ad revenue and Patreon supporters through this YouTube channel. So if you like the work that we do and you value the videos that I make, 
it'd be great if you could do what you can to support the channel either through liking and sharing this video subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and also perhaps considering if you have the capacity to support this project even further through patreon or paypal the links to both are in the description below I really want to thank all of those people who have been patrons or have contributed to this project through PayPal, as without you, this project would not exist. And I also want to thank everybody for watching.